Hi guys, Olive here. Here today to do a review of Tana French's latest release called The Witch Elm. This book was just published on October 9th, 2018. It was published by Viking Books, which is an imprint of Penguin. I read an advanced review copy of this book, but the hardcover comes in at 528 pages. You may know Tana French as the author of the intensely popular mystery thriller series called The Dublin Murder Squad. There are six books in that series as of 2016, and the series begins with arguably the most popular 2007s in the woods. I am a Tana French fangirl. I have read all six books in the Dublin Murder Squad series, and despite the fact that I didn't love the latest addition to the series, The Trespasser, back in 2016, I was over the moon when I found out we were getting another Tana French book this year. But I will say I was really surprised and to a certain extent disappointed when I heard that it wasn't going to be an addition to the Dublin Murder Squad series. I was really surprised because the Dublin Murder Squad series is all she has published up to this point. This is her first standalone novel. So for the very first time in Tana French's publishing career, we do not follow a detective assigned to a specific case. Instead, we follow civilian Toby Hennessy, who has gotten by so far in his life exclusively on his good looks, charm, and luck. But one night, his fortunes turn, and after returning to his apartment from a night of drunken revelry out at the bar with his mates, Toby is horrifically beaten and robbed by a pair of intruders. When he awakens in the hospital after this attack, his luck is somewhat still intact, considering he very nearly died from his injuries. But things that came easily for Toby before the attack are no longer for him. He now has Swiss cheese holes in his memory because of his head injury. One of his eyelids now droops, which transforms his good looks into something more sinister looking. And also when he is up and walking again, he finds he has a limp. And as if these physical changes of Toby's aren't bad enough, after he's released from the hospital, he has to return to his apartment the scene of the attack, which puts Toby into a dark and paranoid state of mind. More bad news arrives when Toby's paternal cousin Susanna calls him to let him know that their beloved Uncle Hugo has brain cancer and does not have much longer left to live. Susanna convinces Toby to move in with Hugo for a period of time to keep him company, but also to keep an eye on him. So Toby and his ray of sunshine girlfriend Melissa move into Hugo's home, which happens to be the ancestral family home where Toby and his cousins used to summer while all of their parents were off traveling. Though neither Toby nor Hugo are in the best shape health-wise, this living situation gives them some peace and some happiness. But all of this is disrupted when one of Susanna's children finds a skull nestled in the hollow of the old witch elm tree in the back garden. So, much later than the typical Tana French novel, enter the detectives who discover that this skull belonged to someone that they all knew years ago. And so the mystery of how this person met their end and ended up in this particular tree begins. Toby is not in any condition to be sticking his nose into this mystery, but that certainly doesn't stop him. Through his digging into the case, we, and Toby for that matter, get flashes of his former self. But as the book goes on, you start to see just how much of an unreliable narrator he is. We find out from Toby's cousins that his memory wasn't the greatest even before the accident. We're told that he's the type of person who pushes any memory in which he feels even mildly guilty about something directly out of his mind. And now after the accident, he is in a permanent fog and Tana French does a really great job of showing that through Toby's narration. You often see him reaching for words. He wants one particular word, but can't quite think of it, but he'll improvise and put something else in its place. So not only do we get to see, oh, he's not doing the greatest mentally, but he's making everybody around around him think that he is. I have to admit that I didn't love this book as I was making my way through it, but it definitely is one of those books that I'm able to see the full strength of after the reading experience is over. This is definitely her most psychological novel, which is definitely saying something if you've read the fourth book in the Dublin Murder Squad series, Broken Harbor. There are huge questions hidden inside this slow-moving thriller. Toby's uncle Hugo is a genealogist, and he's working for a client trying to find out why her DNA analysis isn't showing exactly what she expected it to. While they are living together, Toby helps Hugo do some digging into some old records. And what they discover means that this client 
isn't who she believed herself to be. And then when Hugo starts talking to Toby about how he's going to have to break this news to her lightly, Toby pretends like this wouldn't be a big deal to get this kind of news. He pretends like finding out you aren't who you think you are isn't a big deal. But Toby, in fact, is going through something similar. The attack left both physical and mental scars on Toby to the point where he feels like he's an entirely different person now. He is no longer who he thought he was. And in fact, it seems as though before the attack, he had a very fragile sense of self being largely based off of how others perceived him. So the Toby that we're seeing does not have a foundation of self to rest upon. And so he starts dangerously teetering toward the unstable. Luck is a big part of this novel as well. Right off the bat, Toby starts bragging to you about how he's always been such a lucky guy. But now, after an attack and a burglary, a dying beloved uncle, and a body in the backyard, it seems that his luck has turned. But as the book goes on, you're led to wonder whether or not his luck is still holding on for dear life in the background. This is a really strong character novel. In the last three books of the Dublin Murder Squad series, so Broken Harbor, The Secret Place, and then The Trespasser, I could tell that Tana French was really wanting to expand her boundaries. Writing from the perspective of detectives, feels like you can only do so much with that. In all of the Dublin Murder Squad books, she makes the cases really personal to the detectives in one way or another. And I believe that she has always done that because it plays to her strengths. She is a really great character writer. She has a knack for getting inside their minds, making them really unique. I can only think of one character in her seven novels that was blasé. That's really impressive to me. So while I admittedly had a moment of Oh, really? When I heard that this wasn't going to be a continuation of the Dublin Murder Squad series, I am really happy she took a break from it. She's really flexing some muscle in this book, and I personally think she can go even farther. This book definitely doesn't have the strongest mystery of any book I've ever read, but Tana French definitely played to her strengths and gave us a great character-based novel that will give you a lot to chew on during the reading experience, but certainly afterward. If you would like to hear more of my thoughts on this novel, I very excitingly have written a review of it for Open Letters Review. I will put a link to that down below once it is posted on their site. I would love to hear from you in the comment section below if you have read this book, if you're interested in reading it, and if you have read it and have also read the Dublin Murder Squad series, how do you think it compared? Any other general comments or questions can also go in the comment section below, but you can also find me on a variety of different places on social media, and the links to all of those profiles are linked in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I will see you in the next video. Bye.